This is KGW News at 11. Good evening on this Monday. We begin tonight with the downpours that have created flooding on several area streets tonight. The high water is still causing problems in a few spots. We do have some live team coverage for you tonight on this weather. We're going to check in with Matt Safino in just a minute and see if this rain has finally moved out. But we want to start with Mike Benner. He's live for us in Hillsborough, where one road is still closed at this hour, Mike. Yeah, what a wacky weather night uh, tonight, Dan. I was actually in the newsroom when one of those cells moved through downtown Portland. Absolutely pounding rain. Actually sounded like someone was using a jackhammer on the roof. Let me step out of the way. You'll notice that uh, Hillsboro got uh, hit pretty hard as well. We're on Evergreen between Alaclec and John Olson. Standing water, as you see here, could have this road shut down for several more hours. I want to go ahead and show you a picture from when it was a little lighter out. You'll notice a car actually got stuck in the high water. First responders had to assist uh, the driver. Quite the mess out here. City and county crews have been cleaning up for hours. And speaking of cleaning up, take a look at some videos sent to us from someone at Westview High School. It looks like one of the hallways flooded. Check that out. Students and staff working together to clean up. And outside, it wasn't much better. The athletic fields and track, pretty soggy as well. Moving on, we noticed some problems on I-84 eastbound near Grand, some standing water covering the fast lane. Somebody actually stalled out in the high water, and before they could move their car, they were almost hit several times. Extremely dangerous situation there. And last but not least, we have some viewer videos and pictures out of uh, central Clark County. So southwest Washington did not escape the heavy rain tonight. Problems there as well. Back out here live, though, in Hillsboro. Again, this is evergreen between Alaclec and John Olson. Still uh, quite a bit of standing water out here. So if you're heading this way in the morning, you may want to check uh, trip check or, uh, you know, KGW.com to make sure this road is back open because uh, no one's telling us uh, as of right now when it will reopen. And again, the water is still here on the road. Let's send it back to you guys. Yeah, probably no telling when that's going to open at this point, Mike. Thank you for the update. And as Mike showed you some images that were coming in from our viewers, some of you sent uh, videos in like this one. This is from Sabrina, who's out, also out in that mess in Hillsboro. We just saw Mike. She sent us a video of cars going through the water. This is at Cornell and Stuckey. And Katie posted this picture from Clark County of a man trying to get into what looks like a, maybe a trash can in the middle of a flooded cul-de-sac. And David sending us some video of some kids trying to surf down his street in rushing water. We can't condone that, but <laughs> it's the kind of thing you see on a night like tonight. So let's bring in Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino now. So Matt, has the rain moved out for tonight? It has. It's just outside a bit ago, Laurel, and uh, it's dry. It's actually somewhat <laughs> balmy out there, and it's noticeably different, but those showers were definitely intense. They're now moving out of Clark County into Skamania County and out into the rural sections of the gorge. You can see downtown Portland doesn't have much going on, but it is still raining hard west of Cascade Lock. So if you're driving in the gorge in the next hour or so, you may still yet get a downpour, but that should be the last of it. I widen the view out and there's really not much upstream from us until you get over to the coast. Some heavy showers down around Newport, but I don't expect that to translate and move as it is across the valley. So I think we're done with the heavy downpours here in Portland. But check this one out. This one's set in by Jeff over in Beaverton. And take a listen. You can just hear that rain coming down. Really just dumped. We picked up about a half an inch of rain in downtown Portland from the one cell that moved on through here. The rain bouncing around. So again, these nighttime showers have been really, really intense. But they are moving off there. In fact, if not diminish, they may be ending, uh, at least diminishing, if not completely ending. And then tomorrow they pick back up with thunderstorms once again in the afternoon. I don't think it's going to be like last night or even like this afternoon, hopefully a little less than that. And finally, some dry, warm weather returns on Wednesday. Guys, back to you. Summer's not over. No, Thank it's you. not. Hang in there. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. A Portland pumpkin patch is cleaning up tonight from damage from a tornado yesterday. The National Weather Service visited Plumper Pumpkin Patch today, confirmed the damage is consistent with an EF0 tornado. It touched down briefly at the patch off Old Cornelius Pass Road in northwest Portland. It was enough to tear off more than a dozen solar panels, destroy a tent, and flatten part of the farm's corn maze. It was that damage that was really the strongest indicator of a tornado. Corn stalks were smashed in opposite directions, showing a circular path of destruction. Owner Jim Kessinger says his corn maze will have to be cut down in size a bit for this year's events, but he's just glad there wasn't more widespread damage. 
so I'm grateful uh, that nobody was hurt. My house wasn't hurt. My barn's pretty minimal damage, and, uh, and, and my animals were not hurt. So it could have been a lot worse. Meanwhile, a funnel cloud was also spotted in Vancouver on yesterday, but there was no damage and the National Weather Service does not believe a tornado touched down there. New tonight, we are hearing from a man who says he was shot while boating on the Columbia River. He says the shots came from the shoreline. He's hoping that somebody has some information about this case because so far no one has been arrested. They don't know who pulled the trigger. Mike Benner spoke to this man earlier tonight. Didn't plan on getting shot by a shotgun on the river. He's a pretty happy place. What once was a happy place for Matt Steltz is now one of fear. He says a week ago Saturday, he and his cousin were returning from a salmon fishing trip on the Columbia when somebody on shore shot at them with a shotgun. My boat got hit a couple times. I got hit in the back and head, in the side of my arm. Steltz is alive to talk about it because it was bird shot or small pellets. He says it happened between Kelly Point Park and the Interstate Bridge. The gunfire coming from what appears to be a homeless camp. Oh yeah, 100%. I mean, with where my boat was when it happened, it was, yeah, it was right there where that garbage patch is. We went to the area that Steltz described, and sure enough, there were signs of a camp, though nobody was around, or at least visible to us. Steltz, however, is convinced the shooter was here. You could see the people out there, they had their fires and stuff, but you, you couldn't tell who did it. Steltz spent a day and a half in the hospital, doctors telling him how lucky he was. The trauma the, uh, doctor said if I would have been any closer, I could have been a, a lot worse off. As you can see, Steltz is back on his feet, but not back on the water. That may take some time. A little hesitant, especially not to feel so unsafe. Yeah, I bet. That was uh, Mike Bennett reporting for us there. The Multnomah County Sheriff's Office tells us they are aware of what happened. They know the case is there. It's inv they're investigating currently. Anyone with information should please give them a call. New at 11, after a week-long crime spree, police say a suspected serial arsonist is behind bars. 34-year-old Carl Sandberg was in court today, along with several of his alleged victims. KGW's Catherine Cook is here with what those victims asked the judge. Catherine? Well, Laurel, they asked the judge to set a high bail to help keep Sandberg behind bars. Salem police say during his alleged crime spree, Sandberg showed a disregard for human and animal life. Good afternoon, sir. Are you Carl Sandberg? Yes, sir. 34-year-old Carl Sandberg faced a courtroom of people who wanted to look him in the eye. Sandberg is accused of burglarizing two homes and a church in Salem, then setting two buildings on fire to cover his tracks. Two dogs were killed in the fires, including Crystal Baptiste's family pet. I would wake up every day to see her, and we're waking up to be reminded that she's not here. She took her last breath in my dad's arms. Um, taken everything from us. At this bail hearing, Baptiste asked the judge to keep Sandberg behind bars. And I will be here every single court date to see this man not be on the streets for as long as possible. Police suspect Sandberg burglarized, then set fire to Capitol Baptist Church late last month. Pastor John Lipton says their fellowship hall was nearly destroyed. Uh, the church is resilient, uh, has a long history, and uh, is deeply committed to their faith, and so we're going to get through this. It has messed with my psyche really bad. Under the circumstances, Marianne Gunzelman considers herself lucky. Police believe Sandberg burglarized her home but did not set it on fire. She's missing her late husband's wallet and says someone charged $2,000 on a card. All she really wants back from the wallet is an old photo of her husband wearing his navy whites. We were married for almost 61 years, so there's no way I can get that back. In the end, the judge set bail at $500,000 as those in this courtroom tried to rebuild their hearts and homes. Sandberg's next court appearance is set for September 19th. Again, he's being held on half a million dollars bail. Back to you. All right, Catherine, thank you. All right, folks, we want to get you caught up on some of tonight's other top headlines. A Kalama woman is accused of plotting the murder of three people, including her estranged husband, 54-year-old Don Rolfe. She appeared in court this afternoon, and investigators say she was arrested after she met someone to get a gun. They also see she was planning to hire someone to carry out the murders. Deputies have not said who the other intended victims are. And this man was in court today after Portland police say he pepper sprayed nine people on a TriMet bus over the weekend. And listen to this. Officers say Aaron Locust tried to escape from a police cruiser while being taken to jail Saturday. 
Three officers were hurt in the scuffle. Locust faces multiple charges. The latest crackdown on street racing in Portland netted four arrests over the weekend. Extra officers were patrolling north and northeast Portland looking for this exact type of thing. Uh, they also told, towed cars of the drivers that they caught. The people arrested face uh, charges of reckless driving. One of them was charged for trying to elude police.